Okay, let's uh, practice um, some of the rules we've been playing or playing around with. Um, first one is a product rule problem because I can see that there's two x's there. So remember u prime b plus u v prime. So the derivative of the first would be 12x cubed. And I leave the second one alone. Plus, then I uh, leave the first one alone, 3x to the fourth, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of cosine, remember, is negative sine 4x times 4. And so I can look for the greatest common factor here. And in this case, if you notice here, I can actually factor 12 out of both of them. Because I have 3 times 4 uh, in the right-hand term, which is actually equal to 12. And so I can factor a 12x cubed out of both terms, which leaves in the first term cosine 4x plus x times negative sine of 4x. Okay, second problem is another uh, product, product rule problem um, where u is sine and v is cosine. So derive the first. So y prime would be the derivative of the first, which is cosine x, times, I'll leave the second one alone, plus, now I'll leave the first one alone, and the derivative of the second is negative sine of x, which this could be written as cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, third problem here. I have another product rule problem, a fairly complicated one. So I'm going to derive the first, which I got to use the chain rule here. So four times the inside function to the third power times the derivative of the inside, so times two times. Now I'm going to leave the second function alone, so sine two x plus. Now I leave the first one alone times cosine two x times two. And for purposes here, just make sure we get the product rule down. I'm not going to try to simplify it, but it could be simplified by looking for the common factor. Okay, next problem. It looks like a product rule initially, but then I realize, hey, there's only one x here. So this is actually a chain rule problem. And it's helpful to rewrite this, remember, where the fifth power is written where we normally like to see it. So cosine 5x, the whole thing, to the fifth power. And then I derive this by doing the chain rule. So 5 times, I leave the inside function alone, to the fourth power, times the derivative of the inside, so negative sine 5x times 5. <coughs> Last problem is just a review of the uh, power rule. So negative 1x to the negative 2 power. Remember this for later on. We need this idea uh, to investigate another rule here in just a couple minutes here. Okay, so this question here is, what's the process to graph a function using derivatives and number lines? Well, the idea is that you take both the derivative and set it equal to zero, and the second derivative, and you also look for where they may not exist. And then you place these numbers on a number line, and these become your critical points. So all zeros and D and E's go on the number line, and then you find points to the left and right of each of these to find the behavior of whatever the derivatives you're looking for. So that's the process to graph a function without using uh, the graphing feature of calculator. So the next one is uh, a critical feature you need to learn how to, how to do on the AP exam is to use the solver feature to find critical points. Remember the critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero or does not exist and where the second derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. Okay, But this is one that we're going to, especially with the decimals, we're not going to try to do this by hand. We're going to use the solver feature. Our calculator has a nice feature. It allows us to solve this equation and find all the critical points relatively quickly and painlessly. Okay, this is how you use the solver feature on the Inspire. If you notice here, I put solve, and I typed in the first derivative of the equation, and I set it equal to zero, comma, your variable. And you find the solve feature under the menu, algebra buttons on the calculator, and if you notice here, it gives you all the zeros of this particular function. 
So to use to find the critical points using the second derivative, I would take the second derivative, which is 3.6x squared minus 30x, set it equal to zero, and again, comma your variable, and there are my two, the calculator spits them out for me and gives me my two zeros. So these are all my critical points for both eight, uh, the prime and the second derivative. Okay, so now what we're going to do is find the derivative of u divided by v, where we're going to think of u divided by v as equivalent to u times v to the negative 1 bar. So that I can use the product rule on this. So remember, I'm going to follow the product rule here. The derivative of the first is u prime, and that is a prime symbol, times, I'm going to leave the second one alone, plus, then I'm going to leave the first one alone, times the derivative of the second, which is a little bit tricky here, if I use the power rule like I showed in the previous example, this is negative v to the negative 2 times whatever the derivative of v turns out to be. So we're going to call that v prime. Okay, so if I look at this, I realize, hmm, I can get rid of the negative exponents if I rewrote this as fractions. So I have u prime over v, that's the v to the negative 1, plus u v prime over v squared. And actually, because of this negative sign here, this plus will become a minus. So I'm going to actually change that to a minus. And I think back to the fractions here and realize, wow, got two cut fractions with different denominators. Remember, I need common denominators. The easiest thing to do is to multiply the first one by v, because that'll give me v squared. But remember, what I got to do to the top, I've got to do to the bottom. So I get now u prime v over v squared. Well, I have common denominators. I can actually subtract these and get a rule here that says u prime v minus u v prime, which sounds a lot like the product rule, except it's minus instead of plus, over v squared. And this becomes our quotient rule to be able to find the derivative of functions in which the equation starts out as a division problem. And this is worth memorizing. You don't want to go through this little proof here that I showed you every time. So you need to memorize this as u prime v minus u v prime over v squared. And it does sound like the product rule. So it does make it a little bit easier to, to, to memorize because instead of a plus in the middle, you just have a minus of the quotient rule. And then it's always over v squared. Things you, may, you need to be aware of when you go to solve, um, to use the AP exam and use calculators. You must always use, be able to use the solver feature, which I just showed you how to do, the solve feature. The numerical derivative, which we've been using quite often throughout class, with the DDX button. The numerical integral, which we haven't gotten to yet, we will be getting to. And we also be able to generate graphs of functions. And including in that is creating your own good, a good viewing window. Almost always on the AP exam, Zoom Standard will get you a good viewing window. But every once in a while, you have to change a window a little bit to get to the features that you're looking for in a graph. So again, these are the four features that you need to be able to do on a calculator. And that I will be testing throughout the year. Can you solve with the calculator? Can you use a numerical derivative? Can you use a numerical integral, which we haven't seen yet? And can you make graphs? Those are the four things that you have to absolutely have to be able to do on, an, uh, on the calculator for the AP exam. So let's practice this quotient rule that I just generated before. Remember the quotient rule is u prime v minus u v prime over v squared. Okay? So u being the upper function and v being the lower function in any fraction, I should be able to find the derivative of this by following this rule. So it says u prime, so the derivative of the top is 15x squared. I'll leave the bottom one alone, minus, now I'll leave the top one alone, times the derivative of the bottom, which we know the derivative of sine is cosine, over the bottom one squared, so sine of x squared. And it's usually not necessary to simplify these equations, although they could be simplified, but for purposes right now, we're just going to derive this. Okay, so let's try f of x, and we're going to find f prime of x, by again, finding the derivative of the function using this rule. So u prime means derive the top. Well, the derivative of 5 is 0 times the, bo uh, the bottom, which I leave that alone. So 2x minus 3 to the fourth power. Minus, now I leave the top one alone. And then I derive the bottom. So the I have to use the chain rule on this. So 5 times 4, 2x minus 3 to the third power times 2. I lost room space there. 
over the bottom one squared, so 2x minus 3 to the eighth power. If I square that, it'll actually become the eighth power. Well, if I look here, I realize 0 times anything is just going to be 0, so this part's going to be gone. So this simplifies to 5 times 4 times 2, which is 40 times 2x minus 3 to the third power and actually it should be negative 40 see the minus sign in front of there over 2x minus 3 to the eighth power which just simplifies again a little bit and realize this is negative 40 over 2x minus 3 to the fifth power if I realize I can divide both the top and bottom by 2x minus 3 to the third power okay so let's try this one a much more difficult problem um, derive the top so again we get 2 times the derivative of the inside, I'll leave the inside alone, I'm sorry, cosine x to the first power, times the derivative of the inside, negative sine x. Then I'm going to leave the bottom one alone, times 4x squared, minus, I'm going to run out of space here, I'm going to leave the first one alone, cosine squared x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 8x, all over the bottom one squared. you got to be careful here, because it's 4x squared, the whole thing squared. So if I write this out, this becomes negative 2 cosine x. Oops, let me make that nice. Sine x times 4x squared minus, I'm going to put the 8x out front, cosine squared x all over 16x to the fourth. Okay, and so from here to here, I just simplified the equation a little bit. Didn't do a lot with it, but I simplified a little bit. And this is how the quotient rule works. Hope this helps you as you explore further into calculus.